Hello, book lovers, and welcome to Authors Love Bookstores from a Mighty Blaze. My name is Kimberly hensel Lawrence, and I'm your host for today's interview. And I am so excited to have one of my favorite authors ever on our session today. Welcome to Ann Patchett. We're so excited you're here. Um, hey, hi. Hello from Nash. You're in Nashville. I'm in Boston. This is a wonderful to see you. So for those it's you wonderful. Oh, please. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no, please go ahead. I just wanted to say, if you're watching with us live on Facebook, you can ask a question of Anne in the comments below the broadcast. So Anne is standing outside of her bookstore, Parnassus Books in Nashville. Okay, so I'm going to show you around. This is, I'm actually outside. Uh, we're in a strip mall in Nashville and um, it's raining. You can see it's pouring rain. So this is uh, our curbside pickup, which is exciting. And before we go inside, I want to show you one of my favorite things. It's easiest to see from outside. This is our giant Sandy Boynton pig. Oh. And uh, my sister made a mask for it. Isn't that nice? That's so true. we figure that once the mask comes off the giant pig, then we'll be open again. So right now we're not open. And which means I'm going to lock the door. Now, first thing you need to do is meet Sparky. Here's Sparky. Sparky, look. Okay, there's Sparky. Hello, Sparky. Sparky. So even though we're closed, um, there are lots of people and lots of dogs working in the store. Sparky, your angle is best if you can look up. Okay. We'll be seeing plenty of Sparky. Um, here we have the new releases tables. So we've got our nonfiction here on this side when we first walk in the door okay let me know if i'm going too fast and making great. anybody seasick um, great. And then here we have isn't it exciting i love to see all the new, new fiction just lined up it looks so pretty all the things that we take for granted um these are the patchet novels we have a whole section of those and our staff picks oh excellent yeah, isn't that nice? And it's a really beautiful store. We have baseball caps. Um, we have Kay, who's working over there. There's Kay in her mask. Kay is a very responsible pandemic employee who always is sure to wear her mask. And then Marley. Oh, wait. Well, actually, this could just wind up being a whole half hour of Marley. So we have a congenitally deaf border collie. Okay. Oh. Who likes to chase her own shadow? Who likes to chase her own shadow? Yes. Okay. So that's. that's <laughs> <laughs> okay, right? Later on, I will show you Marley jumping through a hula hoop because that's what it's come to around here. Um, then uh, we have Ben. Ben is making boxes. Ben is. This is really important, obviously, because this is how we get the books out to you. The nice Parnassus stamp on the box. Very good. Great. Um, so I'm just going to repeat for viewers because you're fading in and out. So you're oh, okay. introducing us to Ben, and Ben is putting together all of the boxes to ship out to people who are buying books online from Parnassus. Right. So here, here is the uh, the fruits of Ben's labor. So it's busy online. You have a lot of online purchases happening. People you can get a box of socks, right? And we could even put in a fox. Um, Maybe with some And lines. then we have Andy Brennan, our store manager. Hi, Andy. Welcome. Uh, and then if you're not, you know, getting enough of the shop dogs, we have these beautiful shop dog portraits. Aww. All the dogs have been painted. Right? Isn't that nice? That's wonderful. Um, we have we have a fake dog for the days for the days that the other dogs don't feel like coming into work. We have a faux dog. It's a really good tip if you can't handle dogs yourself. There's Ginger coming up behind me, also working. All right, here we're coming into the children's section. We have these gorgeous stars on the ceiling. Mm. Uh, really, really beautiful children's section. And in fact, I'm going to go around and come in the other way so you can see the adorable entrance to our children's section. 
Oh, it looks like Mount Olympus. Right, but it also looks like the Parthenon if you've ever been to Nashville. Yeah. So we got the little the little book feature, and then we can go under the tiny doorway. Wonderful. And this is really the best part of the store. So <laughs> this is kind of what you need to know. We have a we've got a terrific train table. Normally there would be children playing, but now there are giant rolls of bubble wrap. Mm -hmm because now the entire store is a shipping site. Um, but we still have our fantastic books. We have our gorgeous mural, Parnassus story Storytime. Wonderful. We have all the Sandy Boynton books, which we love. Love her books. Um, and here, let's go into the back room. Let's, okay. let's see where the sausage gets made. So, so we don't often get to see behind the scenes in a bookstore. So this that's exactly the right. So there's Kat. Is Hi, Kat. It's hey. Kat's phone that we're using. Thank you, Kat. Um, oh, there's Opie. Hi, Opie. Oh my goodness, so many store dogs. Um, and there's, there's Kate. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I'm gonna be signing these books today. Whoa. Whoa. Um, wait, I'm gonna introduce you to my partner. This is my business partner. This is Karen Hayes. Hi. Hi Karen. Karen actually does all the work and I just oh, no. walk around with a Not cell true. phone in front of my face. Um, and, and this is my sister, Heather Patrick. Hello. Hello. Heather, Heather does the shipping. There's, there's Becca and so much more. And there's Rayanne. So, you know, we're, we're hopping, we're busy. This is where we keep all of our Oh, galleys. Which, oh, galleys. Like, how much do I hate galleys? And now I miss them because they don't exist anymore. Mm. Um, and this is our, you know, kind of crummy break room. We have lots of snacks here at Parnassus. That's we have a fridge. Good. Yeah. Oh, hey, we have a really nice coffee maker that Reese Witherspoon <laughs> gave us. There's the Reese Witherspoon coffee maker. Reese Witherspoon coffee maker. Yeah. Not every bookstore has that. That's for no, certain. No, it's true. It's true. This is the cramped little office with lots of books and boxes. So there you go. There you go. Thank you for showing us around the store and especially behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's really, it's very exciting. <laughs> it is. It's a very different vibe without customers, but it's fun. It feels like you have a family there. It, yeah, it, it is, it's a little bit like hanging out in a bar all day, except nobody drinks. Okay, so, now I'm going to sit down quietly. Okay, so while you sit, I'm going to just go over your bio real quick for those, okay. those viewers out there who may not know Ann Patchett. I don't know who you are. But <laughs> you go. People are like, why, why is she just walking around with a phone showing me a bookstore? Why? Uh, Ann Patchett is a best-selling author of eight novels, three books of nonfiction, a children's book, and she's also edited a short story collection. And in case you doubted me when I said she was one of my favorite authors, this is my Ann Patchett shelf in my house. So, hey, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so big fan here. Um, Ann has won many prizes for her books, including Britain's Orange Prize. The Penn, the Penn Faulkner Prize, the Book Sense Book of the Year Award, and her most recent book, The Dutch House, was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. Congratulations, Anne. Thank so, you. So well deserved. My, my goal professionally in life now is to publish a book in a year that Colson Whitehead doesn't publish a book. <laughs> Do you would you call him up and say, when are you publishing and I'll plan? I really should. Like, I know him. I, 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 I absolutely could do that. He published Underground Railroad the year Commonwealth came out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I, I would like just a little space, Colson, just, just a little space. Well, I loved Commonwealth and I loved the Dutch House. <laughs> Yeah, and I love Colson. So yes, and I've been around Railroad was amazing. I know. Yeah. And the Nickel Boys. It's it's genius. It's yeah, right. What are you gonna do? You're gonna just, give him a call, I think. Next I'm time. just gonna give him a call. Right. The world's big enough for both of us. So Anne's books have been translated into over 30 languages. So people all around the world get to enjoy her beautiful, beautiful words. And as we've just realized, she is the co-owner of Parnassus Books in Nashville, Tennessee. So 
Being a best-selling author and being a bookseller puts you in this very special spot where you can see all the different sides of the world of books. What have you learned during the pandemic? How are bookstores and authors responding to this crisis? You know, I feel like I've spent, we've been open for eight and a half years and I feel like I've spent the last eight and a half years banging this drum about saying, we're a community center. We're here for, me, for you. You know, yeah, you have to pay full price for the books, but you can come and meet authors and come to story time and be involved and look at the books and get advice from really smart booksellers and, um, you know, contribute to the tax base in your community. And what's been really interesting to me is I feel like everything I've been talking about all this time has really come true. And people have been here for us in such a beautiful way. Um, our customers have just ordered books online and they're picking them up outside at the curb. We're shipping them out. I, I mean, we, we get orders from all over the country, but especially here in Nashville, I'm just very, very touched by the way people have shown up for us. And I know that that's true. I hear it from a lot of my bookstore friends around the country that, you know, we're, um, I think we're hanging on better than a lot of businesses. It's, it's certainly not what it was, but we have kept everybody on payroll. We've kept everybody's health insurance and that's what matters. Fabulous. That's great news. We've talked to a couple of booksellers on this series who have said that the way that they have stayed alive during this pandemic is by pivoting, is by being more innovative and finding creative ways for their customers to connect with books, to connect with authors. They've been putting together new packages or you know uh, compilations of books. Has Parnassus yeah. done anything like that? Anything you yes. want to draw <laughs> viewers' attention to? Yeah, um, the book bundle, the gift box. Okay. We started with Mother's Day. And it was a really interesting evolution because it started with my sister Heather and I having a conversation about different things that we could do. And we thought, oh, we wanna do a gift box and send us your phone number and we'll call you. And then we'll talk about what kind of books your mom likes and what your mom maybe has already read and what she'd be interested in. And we bring this idea to the staff and everybody says, no, no, just you can, give a category like your mom likes literary fiction or mystery or cookbooks or horror and they're two price points and we put the whole box together and it turns out that what people really want is to be relieved of choice uh, people really want to say yeah i want to send my mom a hundred dollar gift box you make all the decisions um, she likes literary fiction or she likes romance or she likes essays or, you know, that would be the only bit of information that we would have. And I said that I would write your mother a Mother's Day card. And I wrote 250 Mother's Day cards. What? And, you know, we sent out these book boxes. Now we're doing new baby boxes. We're doing Father's Day, graduation, birthdays. And so that's been really, really great. Also, because it gives us a chance to sell sidelines, which we really, you know, online, we can't sell sidelines. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. So you can get a great hedgehog in your box. You can get a candle, you can get um, a terrific notebook or a box of stationery or something like that. Um, that's one of the ways that we've pivoted. Um, I'm making all of these Instagram videos in which I wear ball gowns, uh, of which it turns out I have so many, who knew? Um, I made the last set wearing a bridesmaid's dress from 2005, but they're short and I'm just trying to highlight different books that I am reading that I really love. And that's been a big success. Uh, we have a first editions club and people have been fantastic. We've had so many people sign up for the first editions club since this whole thing started. And what that means is you know, we pick a book out for you, Kat, who you met at the beginning, and this is Kat's phone. Kat and I read constantly and we pick a book, you know, we try to be three or four months in advance, get signed first editions and mail them out. Wonderful. I think these books sound like that way that you walk into a bookstore and you tell a bookseller, I have to buy a book for my friend and this is what she likes. And then the bookseller runs over and finds you five books. 
Yeah. Oh, she liked this author. She liked Dan Patchett. She will like this author and this author and this author. Right. And right. It's all it's all about the comp, right? Right. It so, is. So yeah, you just in. you know, you yeah. love this idea that you thought about them, right? You thought about what they like. Yeah. And you yeah. similar. I've gotten a crazy number of thank you cards from people who are like, thank you, dear Ann Patchett, thank you for my Mother's Day present. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I did write on the card, dear Sally, this is from your sweet Amy, <laughs> right? It's not actually from me, but I signed the card, so I get the thank you note. That works. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um so as a bookseller, I imagine you often have to, and as a reader and as a writer, you're often recommending books to people and yeah. making suggestions. And we've already gotten questions from Facebook and I was going to ask you this as well, but what are you, what is Ann Patchett reading now during this pandemic? What What is bringing you happiness or joy or just distracting you from the world? Okay, I'm getting up now. I'm walking again. Um, I I will say that I really struggled at first kind of finding my reading groove. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing that really anchored me was middle grade. So I have not read tons of middle grade, but this is this is the gateway drug to middle grade, yeah. Katie Camillo. Oh my God. So I recommend reading every single bit of Kate D. Camillo. Um, and in fact, I wanna show you something. This is really great. I'm, again, I'm so worried about making people car sick hopefully it's it's all right so i've sold so many kate d camillo books that um kate's publisher sent us our own Aww. edward tulane right but edward tulane was wearing this super um scary edwardian outfit and so i bought him some pajamas and i changed his clothes Excellent. and now he's he's just more user friendly so we have we have the big bunny. Um, so I, I do really like to say if anybody is having a hard time concentrating and getting into reading, I think that maybe middle grade is a wonderful place to start. It's very friendly and you can have a full experience with a book in just a few hours. Poetry wonderful for that as well and short stories so let's talk about some of the things that i really love always easy to put my hands on i love this book the resistors by gish jen yes um it's brilliant there's nothing else like it uh it's a it's it's also a wonderful book to read during a pandemic because of course the good thing about the pandemic um, is that it's slowing the world down and we are staying home and using fewer resources and calming and um, the resistors will make you feel really good about that. And now I am trying to find, oh yes, this is another book that's wonderful to read during this time, The Story of More by Hope Jaron. Um, and it's about consuming less and sharing more. And when I read this book, when it came out, um, and I think I read it actually in galleys, I read it before it came out, and you just think, oh, if only people would stop flying so much, and if only people would stop eating so much meat, and all of the things this book recommends in a very smart and gentle way now feels completely possible. Hope Jaron, of course, wrote Lab Girl, which is a book that I love. And now I'm going to take you over to the new releases table. This, this is the favorite book of everybody at Parnassus, Margaret Rankle's Late Migrations. I would feel even silly talking about it here in Nashville, but if we're going all over the country, then you should definitely pay attention to this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book about nature and family. It's written in a collection of very small essays. Margaret is an op-ed writer for the New York Times. When people say, I want something comforting that kind of gives meaning to what's going on, late migrations. Okay, have you talked to Emma Straub yet? No, we have not yet. Oh, I loved it. Okay, love but you will, of course. Okay. I love Emma's new book, All Adults Here. Um, it's smart, it's funny. It's one of those books that you just sort of fall into and, and can't get out of. 
Um, how do you how do you balance? being a bookseller and being a writer? How do you, what's your, are you 50, 50 book writing? Are you all books no. right now? No, 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 no. I'm, I am um, here. I'm going to show you one more book. This okay. is my favorite. Oh, she's so fantastic. Yeah. She, and, and also, you know, it's me and Louise and Emma, but Louise of course has Birch Bark books in Minneapolis, which is a fabulous, gorgeous, tiny bookstore. And I really feel like Louise is our very best writer. And I think that this is her very best book. So I need to tell you that I don't, for the most part, work in this bookstore unless I am making book boxes. I come in a lot, I sign, but I'm, I am not on the payroll. So I like to say I am the benevolent overlord. Um, my life is definitely as a writer. During this time, I've been much, much, much more in the store than I ever have been in my life. Um, and I've really enjoyed it. It's like for the first time, I feel like I know where everything is. Puzzles. 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 Everybody wants puzzles. We have t-shirts with shop dogs on them. So um, yeah, I mean, balancing, um, balancing isn't such a, isn't such a big problem. Boy, I want to make sure before we get too far into this, that we can see Marley jump through a hula hoop. Okay, so I would hate to think that we got all the way through. Um, so I wanted to ask you some questions about the Dutch house while you're looking for Marley. Okay. Can you do that? So, sure, thank you. Um, when, I, when I mentioned to some friends that I was going to be speaking with you today, <clears throat> okay, so every single friend I have, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> one of my friends said that uh, the Dutch house was the first book that she read during the pandemic that she could actually get swept up in. That every other book, she had false start after false start, but your book was the one that she could connect with. That's really nice. I, I appreciate it was a, that. A lovely compliment. And I wondered what it was you thought about this book that's resonating with people so well. Is it the family? Is it the sense of place? What is it? But a hard question. No, I just, I mean, really, it, I have no idea. Um, you know, I feel like a lot of the success of this book has to do with the fact that Tom Hanks did the audio. I think mm -hmm. that a lot of people listened to it and then went and read it. And the books had good word of mouth. Um, yes, it definitely but, had good word of mouth. You know, it's it's really funny because of course, I wrote it a while ago. It came out last September. I wasn't I wasn't ever thinking, I wonder how this would play during a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> there. Oh, can we can, can we get her to oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, now Marley's I'm gonna come back to the Dutch house. I have another okay, question. Wait. Oh okay. hold on. Oh I can we? <laughs> and he got the biscuit. Okay. He got the biscuit. Okay. okay. And I, I think you can see at the bottom of the screen. Oh. It's Bedlam now. It's who cares about the Dutch house? Oh, get her. He Yay! Okay. Yay! Okay. Marley. Marley's like I'm getting. The deaf problem is Marley is deaf. I mean, uh, congenitally deaf. So when she leaves the building, there's really nothing we can do about it. Okay, right. Now I'm going to be a professional and I'm going to pay attention again to what you're asking me. No, this Shoot. is, I mean, this is why we love independent bookstores, right? They have personality. You yeah. never know what's going to happen. We, the, you I, never, you never know what's going to happen. That's the truth. Love. We love this stuff. Um, so I also love the Dutch house. And I, for me, it was very much the story of the brother and the sister. It really made me think of my own brother oh. and our relationship and how siblings knit together their their connection differently when they have parents who are that are living and when their parents pass on mm -hmm. and i wondered where was the kernel of this story was it in the sibling relationship was it in the house where did this book start for you you know it's funny the kernel of the story was really in the character of elna who's their mother who yes. leaves them. Uh, because when I wrote two drafts of this book, two completely different versions of this book. And when I wrote it the first time, it was a book about Elna and her feeling so suffocated by the wealth and the house and wanting to serve the poor and wanting to 
be a certain kind of person and have a certain kind of life. And I wrote that whole book and it was a disaster. And then I went back and wrote a book about her two children who got left behind. Um, so that's, that's how it started, but boy, how a book starts and where it ends up can be very different things. That's fascinating. I, I read somewhere that you plot out your books in your head. So you always know where they're going to end. So yeah, I do. I just did a bad job of it this time. <laughs> no, you just needed to write through that other version before you could find your way to this version, right? I guess that's, it's never happened to me before, but you know, live and learn. Have you ever plotted a book out and the ending changes when you get to it? Um, well, I mean, in a sense, that's what happened this time because I plotted the book out and I wrote the whole thing and then I changed. Um, I, I have had the experience of not knowing exactly. I know with State of Wonder, I really didn't know what was going to happen in the end of that book. I, I wrote through the whole book, not being able to figure out which way it was going to go. Okay. Um, we, we're getting some audience questions. And so um, one of them was about Commonwealth, mm -hmm. one of my favorites. And um, the question was, are the characters in Commonwealth based on any real life counterparts? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, very, it's very much based on my family. It's the only book that's based on my family. Now that said, the things that happened to those people didn't happen to the members of my family. Nobody died, you know, but, but the, the six kids, the blended family, the big cross country move. Yes, that all is true. And then someone else asked about the mother, about Elna and the Dutch house. If the, if there's a real life person who inspired her. No, I mean, unless maybe it was Dorothy day. I was, okay. um, but that seems like such a long time ago that I was thinking about Dorothy Day, but I was. Someone else wants to know, do you always know the title of the book at the outset or do you come up with it after writing? It varies. And it's so much better if you know the title at the outset. Um, why, is when that? I get, why, is it, why is it better if you know at the outset? Um, because Titling a book when you're finished is kind of like naming a kid when they're 20. You know, it's like you feel like you have to get it exactly right. But if you if you embed a title, um, then it works all the way through. There's a, um, the story, the title for Commonwealth was I had just started that novel and my friend Sally Mann had just written her nonfiction book, which wound up being called Hold Still, which is an absolutely fabulous memoir about her life as a photographer. And I read the book in manuscript and she didn't have a title. The book takes place in Virginia. And I said, I think you should call it Commonwealth. It just makes so much sense for the book. And she loved the title and she called her editor and her editor said, that's a fabulous title but it's, an, it's a fiction title and not a nonfiction title. It won't work for your book. And she called the book Cold Still, which was a much better title. But immediately I thought, oh my God, Commonwealth is a great title for a book. I'll just move these people to Virginia and I'll call the book Commonwealth. And yeah, so there you go. Um, so we're, we're coming to the end of our time together, but I have a couple more questions. Okay. So um, one of the audience questions um, is, do you write every day? And no. I'm, no. And are you writing <laughs> during the pandemic? We're finding that some authors find this to be a prolific time and others find it to be terrible. Um, you, on that? you know, I, I neither. I, I'm not prolific, nor do I find it to be terrible, artistically speaking. Um, I've been... I've been working on children's projects okay. and I find that that's just my speed. I don't know what's going on in the world. I don't understand what's going on in the world enough to say, I'm going to write a novel. I don't want to write a novel about the pandemic. And yet I can't imagine writing a novel that doesn't include the pandemic. And so I'm writing about mice. Excellent. <laughs> And, and what age is that book for your children? Um, I don't know, but you know, I, I'm really, I'm, I'm really out over my skis here, but I am trying to write a middle grade novel about mice. 
Stay okay. tuned. You may never hear anything about this again, ever. Well, I have many- been writing some picture books too, and okay. and those are solid. Great. I have two middle grade readers in my house who love to read, so we will keep I'll, our eyes. Peeled. I'll I'll get going. I need to speed okay. up then before they grow up. Um, what are you looking forward to doing once the pandemic is over and it's safe to go out in the world? Is there a travel or? Food? I think I never want to travel again. I think I've been traveling my whole life and what this has taught me is that I don't ever want to go any place ever again. Um, I love being home. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to the bookstore being open. I'm looking forward to having customers again, but man, there is no place like home. So no, I'm, I, I'm such an introvert and I am an introvert living the life of an extrovert. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice to now be an introvert living the life of an introvert. <laughs> well, I hope to travel someday and come to Nashville and see Parnassus. And I'm sure that many of our viewers wish to do that as well. And yes, I, we'd love to see you. And even though we cannot come to Parnassus um, in person ourselves, we can buy books online at parnassusbooks.net. And for those of you who want to learn more about Anne's books, you can visit annpatchett.com to see her bio, some of her writing, a list of her books that you can go then and purchase at Parnassus. Um, if you buy them at Parnassus, she'll personalize them for you. And this breaks my heart, but we are we are at the end of our conversation. And thank you so, so much. This was such a joy to talk with thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you doing this project. Oh, we love it. We're happy to support independent bookstores and authors. It's a real joy for all of us. Viewers, please join us back here next time for more of Authors Loves Bookstores. Until then, be well and keep reading. Thank you.